What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today we're doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. I've had this device for a little bit now. I know that I'm a little late to the game. I get it. It is kind of a high-end dripper. Well, it's not kind of. It is a high-end dripper or an RDTA type deal. And we know that I'm not a huge fan of RDTAs just because I don't like them. I don't like where it's a dripper but kind of a tank. If I'm going to use a dripper, I'm going to use a dripper. If I'm going to use a tank, I'm going to use a tank. I know there's a lot of people that like RDTAs and the way that they work as far as wicking and non-stop action and good to go. Now that squonking has come around, there's not really much point of an RDTA. You could use the argument and say, well, I don't want to use a squonk device. I want to use a regular device while getting double the battery life instead of having to worry about a bottle that's inside of my mod to give me a consistent flow of juice. Plus an RDTA has a tank already below it. I could see that point. I, I think it's a very, very valid, valid point. The way that I got this device was being on a list. This is one of those listed items. And I know you Usually that deters people away from getting this, uh, but you can find this for people that have one that are going to sell it. It's going to be a difficult item for you to find, but I have to do the review because it's not getting any younger sitting in the box. But what we're talking about today is DNV's SCAR RTA or RDTA, depending on how you look at it. There is some revolutionary and innovation things on this device that makes it more unique than most of the high-end stuff that comes out. Those of you that recall when I did my 502, I wanted it to have innovation and be different than everything else. Granted, it came out of cost because I didn't just stop at one thing to be innovative. I did like five different things. Airflow, uh, squonk pin, set screws. You know, there was a lot of things that were different with it that we're not typically used to seeing. Usually when things are very innovative, that comes out of cost and you lose sales because of the innovation that deters a lot of people away. This is one of those companies and devices that I don't think they give a shit whether or not you buy their device just because there's a very select few and niche amount of people that like this device or like this company. This company also makes billet box accessories. They do like custom engraved boral tank doors, they do regular doors, they do 510 drip tips, buttons. I don't think that they're venturing still in that area, but they were for a little bit. And then they released this. Now, this was never put on their site. I can't speak now for the date of this video, but I can speak for when it first came out. The only way to get this was to be in their clothes group get on a list and then it randomized and then it picked names off the list can't just buy this device the way it is so without further ado let's flip it I just want to let everybody know the way you see this is the way it's supposed to come as far as authentic wise it shouldn't be coming in a plastic tube it shouldn't be having peak horn or even a metal horn it has to come the way that you're about ready to see this this is a listed item this is not an item that you're just gonna find flopping about you may find someone that has one that's willing to sell it or let it go or maybe even DNV may list a couple on their site but it is kind of a limited edition RDA although in my opinion it's an RDA DTA just because there's a tank underneath which we will go over and I apologize for my fingers being cracked That's due to the coldness of the weather. So don't think that I'm over here ripping my fucking fingers off self cutting myself That's not a situation. There is the dripper We will go over that shortly and then you have a peripheral bag and a sticker underneath inside the peripheral bag You have a couple things you have two different allen keys You have an o-ring two different insulators or isolators so you can run a single coil setup I'm assuming the reason why they included two is in case if you lose one because if you use two then you have no coils and no cotton and I don't think anybody's buying a dripper to put nothing inside of it. There's two different sets of Allen screws on the bottom. You have kind of chubby ones which are for the split post then you have two little tiny ones which are for the top and the bottom of the dripper. Now there is no point of both plugging top and bottom and I'll explain why and you'll understand when I show you the actual device. So that is everything inside the peripheral bag. Really when you're getting high-end stuff it doesn't usually come with anything so anything that's additional is a bonus. On the bottom here, you have an adapter to make this 23.5 or 24 millimeter. Without that and the raw PMMA on your mod is gonna be 22 millimeter. Your top cap is gonna go ahead and come off. Once you take this top cap off, you will notice that there are some grooves, nipples, cuts, and slices. The way that they explain it on their website is where this logo is, this scar is where your airflow is going to reside. So if you wanna run a dual coil situation, say I was talking about my fingers being 
cracked. Again, I apologize. There is your airflow situation, and if you line up SCAR with that airflow, that's a dual coil scenario. Or if you turn it, which it does not lock in place, keep that in mind, it just free spins. If you turn it, you'll get it to the single coil airflow. There's no way to lock the situation once you get this on and you start sliding it about. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. There is no indication as to where that single coil setup is. Kind of reminds me of my dripper that you just have to fucking wing it and just go for it. It's a hidden airflow system. If you watch when this is on, you don't actually see any airflow. Looking at the deck, let me pull up the old trusty rusty. Boom. You have a split post scenario. Now this may remind people of the skill RDA. A lot of people are saying that, you know, if you put enough heat on these decks, what's going to happen is these are going to split and you're not going to be able to get your screw in there. That did happen with an authentic skill RDA for me. I just want to clear that up so people understand. About this real quick. Inside here is threading. You can't really see it. One of these small Allen screws will go inside there. I will show you right now. This is one of the set screws, so to speak. Now, if you want to use this as a dripper, what you're going to do is flip this around because it does have a squonk pin in it already and you're going to screw this in. Now, what that's going to do is allow you to block out that hole so as you pour your juice down here, it will fill up the tank. Or you could take that screw out and then put it in the top and then that is going to allow you to squonk. I know people automatically, and keep in mind, you're going to want to be real careful with these screws because they're really, really freaking dainty. Keep in mind that if you do do this and you fill up this top right here, this pin, and put that in, when you squonk, it's just going to fill up the tank and anything residual will come out of these ports. Literally a straight shot directly through. There's no holes, there's no ports, there's nothing. I would have much preferred this in like a boral silicate maybe, or maybe a polished PMMA. Looking inside of the actual tank section, oh my god. Like, take a look at the engravings on the inside of this, on the inside of this cap. Now, you're never going to see this unless, of course, you take it apart. They literally engrave their name and their abbreviation on the top piece. I've never seen that before. It almost reminds me of, like, a coach or a Chanel or maybe even a Louis Vuitton or a Louis Crouton, depending on if you're eating salad while you're putting stuff inside of your pocketbook. This just looks really friggin' nice, man. Wow. Oh, I've never seen that. The level of machining that one would have to go through to do that. There's your ports that will fill up the tank and of course your 510 threading. It does not come with a different 510 pin. If you want to close up the bottom to actually use it as a dripper, you're going to need to basically just put a set screw in the bottom. I guess you could put a set screw in the bottom and the top. I don't know why you would want to do that though. How the hell are you going to get juice in there? Airflow is at a little bit of a pitch which kind of doesn't fight you'd get a little bit of leaking but there is a little bit of a ledge again it's very very minuscule and usually high end is going to promote more of a higher resistance build and that's why i have a lot of fans that are based out of russia greece italy because a lot of the vapors out there vape how i do with higher ohms and more voltage than they do lower ohms and more wattage i know people are going to rip me apart especially my people from europe what i got going on is a dual 31 gauge 31 gauge with 38 on the outside. It's kind of a micro fuse Clapton. You're not going to be able to do a lot of wraps on this just because of the distance between each one of these posts. That is the machining on this is really, really good. You saw the bottom side. One of the pressure points on the top is flush with the deck while this one is kind of recessed in. And I'm assuming that's so when you do squonk, you get extra your juicage it's gonna go out of here before it goes out of this and then sucks out between the two of those you have to be careful with squonking on this because this is at a pitch and there's not much of a level basing however this is an rdta so you don't necessarily need to use this as a squonker using it as a squonker is kind of i guess an additional feature just because you can fill up your tank and then whatever coils you have on the top and usually if you're using a device like this you're not going to use it as a squonker but i have to give a big shout out to dnv for actually adding a set screw scenario kind of validates my idea even a little bit further threading is a little shangati there's some jimmy jammies on there some flippy flops you see it some jungletas that's slippers in mexico if you have slippers on your dripper i think we have to discuss where you got your dripper at i was gonna say shangati today we're just all about different languages and that is the horn i was talking about whenever you see a video and this is a either peck peak 
non-Delrin, as you see here, stainless steel, that is a clone. That is not made by DNV to be a different material than that Delrin that's there right now. So what I did here is I kind of built it like a dripper, but I didn't. I used micro fuse claptons. You know the build that we got going on there, 0 0.40. I didn't put the plug in the top because I want to see what happens if you squonk this while both the top and the bottom are open. I am going to use this as a squonker just because it does have a tank and that's just what it's designed to do. You know, if it doesn't work like this, then all I have to do at that point is just plug the top up. But let's see. So we're going to go ahead and squonk and see where the juice goes. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Okay, as you see that the juice is actually coming through the top. Now, if you want to use this as a squonker like I'm doing now, you'll be able to do that. The only issue you're going to have is actually filling the tank up would take uh, quite a long time. And as you can see, it's already starting to leak. It's not going to be really friendly for kind of filling it up that way versus if I take the regular little pin jammy that it comes with, the set screw, and I put that in to block up that port. And you see there's already some juice in there. This is Delrin, so it does have a really high tolerance of heat. But what you may notice is when you first use this device and you put kind of a low build in it, you may have an issue where it will smell like a burnt asshole. And that's, that's perfectly a normal smell. I know you're probably wondering is how do I know the smell of burnt asshole? But I've burnt a lot of assholes in my time. I like to consider myself a good asshole burner. What I did here was by mistake, I went ahead and threaded that in the wrong way so it's kind of cross-threaded so I have to kind of re-thread this. Which is proving to be a little difficult. So now when you squonk, what's going to happen is it's going to actually fill up the tank. Hopefully I don't uh, jostle this about to show you, but you press it. You press it, it's just going to utilize the bottom ports. And there you'll see, watch. See? and then whatever runoff is gonna go there. I feel like this is gonna be utilized best by using it as an RDTA, kind of using the reservoir as the runoff, so to speak. And to use this in full airflow configuration, we're just gonna line up that air port with the top cap like that. And resistance is still the same, so we are good to go, but I do have to put a different battery in it. Once again, this is the DNV SCAR RDA by DNV. Let's bring it on the top. Go G2G, bitches, what? All right, let's do this. All right, guys, so we are back on top with the DNV SCAR RDA sitting on top of the Kronos. If you haven't seen the review for this, post the link right there. Fuse clap and jammies with a three millimeter inner diameter, and if you look down the center, you'll see that it's really close to the top cap. It is what it is. Uh, 0.41 at 38.5 watts. Here we go. It sounds a little tight, and that's because it is. You know, a lot of people think that I'm like a higher resistance mouth lung guy. I'm not. I'm not. I am a direct lung type of guy, but I'm more about 6 to 8 voltage in that region. I'm not quite sure as the voltage that I'm putting out, but I absolutely love this mod. I don't really have any single battery squonkers out there that are like high end. All I have the Vicious Ant or this. And this is using a DNA 60, so automatically I'm just inclined to go to this. This is just very, very expensive. This dripper is not designed for really loose draw so let me try to step out of my boundaries for a minute to do this review now i just did pump it up to 44.5 watts here we go same situation wide open airflow as much as you can hear that airflow is as much as i feel that airflow it's like non-existent it's a tight draw like it's really really tight for a dripper people that like high-end devices you may really really like this this may remind you something of the narda that's the type of airflow i'm getting i do know because my coils are quite large in there it's going to cause a little bit of an obstruction to the airflow thus making it a lot tighter than what it normally would be so for something like this if you're going to do anything really exotic i recommend 2.5 millimeter inner diameter or Maybe a 2.8, you could fit 3.0, but you're not gonna, don't do fuse Claptons. Just do regular Claptons. That's the most exotic you should get with this. That will open up the airflow a lot more, but this is not gonna be, I'm telling you right now, the amount of people that would love a device like this would be very, very select few amounts. It's 
not really designed for the masses. It's not. These are some of the fallbacks I have with this. Reiterate, retort, remix, wiki, wiki. Being that this is an RDTA or an RDA in their mind with a little bit of a reservoir, when you take the squonk bottle out, if there's juice inside of that tank and you let that bottle loose and you remove that pressure, you're going to get liquid that's going to leak down as you're trying to fill the squonk bottle. Now, I know you can use the argument that you could unscrew this and just fill the top of it. No, no, that's not going to work either because now you still have that squonk pin that's wide open and the holes there. So there's consistent amounts of juice that's always being recycled back into your squonk bottle. That may cause a bit of an issue for some people, including myself, and this is why I don't like RDTAs with squonk options. That's kind of the way you have to go. Now, if you were to use this as a regular dripper, it's going to perform the same way. It's just that you, you know what the funny part is? If you're using this as a squonker, you don't even need to put a pin in the top. You probably should, though, just to fill up the tank and use it as like an RDA, not an RSA. As far as squonking is concerned, I don't really think this is a good squonker. I feel it's good as a squonker to fill a tank, not to actually vape with, if that makes sense. Because if you're using this as a squonker to actually get on the coils and wick it up, it's not going to function well as the, the slants and the airflow. It's just not going to shine really good as a squonker. It's, it's not. On a squonker, this will work good, just not with the set screw inside. I actually like this, it just hits really, really hard. I normally wouldn't do this on video, but I had to do this just because. Uh, it's gonna sound a little unrealistic, but I'll show you. I'm working with a one ohm build. You see it there on the top? 34 gauge core with 34 gauge on the outside. Regular clapping. Could have just done twisted, would have been the same shit, but I, I don't know. And twisted would have held a lot better and not be as springy as the clapping is. This is what I'm working with. So you'll hear the airflow now is much more wide open and that's because I don't have so much coil blocking the airflow. This dripper definitely requires a certain prerequisite prior to using it. Just keep that in mind if you're gonna buy this device. This is not something that, you know, is like 20 bucks either. This is a really, really high end RDA, but I do believe this to be an RDTA. We're kind of the only people that call them RDTAs. Everybody else calls them RDAs with a really big reservoir. If I was to rate this dripper on a zero to 10, I'm gonna give it like a six, a 6.5. One of the biggest fallbacks I have with this is the whole RDTA option. I understand that if you wanna use it as a dripper, you go ahead and you plug the bottom. If you wanna use it as a squonker, you go ahead and plug the top or don't plug it at all. Like, I get all that. But it's only a 1.9 milliliter, which at that point is just like another dripper. I just feel like this device is a little too tight for my liking. I would really like a device this tiny that had the same type of options, but more of a valve option, something like that of the 502, where I can take the tank off and I can fill it up or I can fill up the squawk bottle and not have to worry about juice coming out. This doesn't do that. So it's kind of a pain in the ass to actually fill up the tank or fill up the bottle without actually losing juice. The biggest thing that's hurting this rating is the tightness of the draw. As much as I open that up running a one ohm build, that's not realistic for me. I feel like that's a little too high. A 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is kind of the brink of, okay, that's too much. The amount of flavor you're getting is immense, and that's because your coils are literally right next to your mouth. I like the design of the tank as well. I feel like if the slits were a little bit larger, it would make it that much better. And it's not like just the top cap is really cutting off the airflow because that's literally cut out and it's just kind of coming in at an angle. I feel the well should be a little bit deeper. It should be a 24 by default because that's 22 right now and it's kind of recessed in on the chronos because there is a flush cup i don't know how well you're really going to be able to see it if you like really restrictive hits you're going to like this dripper i don't feel like i put a hole in my pocket by buying this because i already have the split and the split r and those two devices i didn't like either out of all the rdas that i've done or rdtas or rstas or rsas there's not really many that shine in that whole realm of squonking. If the Insane by Athea had a squonk option, ooh, shit, that would be hot potatoes. But there's not really any. I didn't like the squonky, I didn't like the split addy. Really like that engraving on the bottom. I think that's so fucking sexy that DNV put that on the bottom. I know that's extremely aesthetics. And even if that, because you're never gonna see it anyway, it just looks that good. I just hope other companies follow suit and do some of that shit on the bottom. Of course, that's going to jack up the price because that's like laser engraving on the inside of the deck on the bottom where you're never going to see. 
I do have to give them props for that because that's where they shine. This machining and the way that this looks on the inside is a fucking win. I feel if it was a 24, they would give you that much more airflow. And I've kept it real. Have you? Check his out.